Hi guys, this is a small introductory video on extreme programming. Um, today we are going to discuss on what is XP, history of XP, activities, values and practices of XP. So before we move on, let me introduce myself. Um, I am Gaurav. Uh, I have a software development background of over 10 years. I'm working in agile practices for more than four years. Um, uh, you can reach me on Twitter at Gaurav. Gore, where I have replaced uh, the second A with four as I was not able to uh, get my username. Uh, right. So without wasting much time, let's start on extreme programming. Uh, extreme programming or XP is a type of agile software development that advocates frequent releases uh, in short development cycles. It is a software development methodology which is intended to improve software quality and responsiveness to changing customer requirements. Uh, it is intended to improve the productivity and introduce checkpoints at which new customer requirements can be adopted. Uh, extreme programming has taken its name from the idea that the beneficial elements of traditional software engineering practices are taken to extreme level. As an example, uh, code reviews are considered a beneficial practice. Uh, taken to extreme, code can be reviewed continuously and practice uh, uh, with the practice of pair programming. Let's see a little bit about history of extreme programming. Um, extreme programming was created by Kent Beck during his work at struggling Chrysler Comprehensive Compensation System Payroll Project, or C3, as it known. In 1996, Chrysler called in Kent Beck to help with their struggling C3 project as an external consultant. The project was designed to aggregate a number of disparate payroll systems into a single application. Initially, Chrysler attempted to implement a package solution, but it failed because of complexity of surrounding the rules and integration. From this point of crisis, Kent Beck and his team took over, effectively starting the project from scratch. The classic waterfall model development, uh, uh, the classic waterfall development approach have been tried and failed. So something drastic was required. In Kent Beck's own word uh, regarding extreme programming, he just made the whole thing up in two weeks with a marker in his hand and a whiteboard. Fundamentally, the C3 team focused on business values uh, the customer wanted and discarded anything that did not work towards that goal. Extreme programming was created by developers for developers. The XP team at Chrysler was able to deliver their uh, first working system within one year. In 1997, the first 10,000 employees were paid for from the new C3 system. Development continued over the next year and new functionality being added through small releases. Uh, eventually, the project was cancelled because the prime contractor changed and the focus of Chrysler shifted away from C3. When the dust settled, the eight-member development team had built a system with 2,000 classes and 30,000 methods. Uh, XP had been refined and tested and was now ready for the wider development community. Let's uh, have a look at the uh, activities of XP. Um, let's, let's start with coding. Coding is the most important um, product of extreme programming process. Uh, one of the best thing I like about XP is that not only customer is available to the development team, but also a part of development team. Developers understand the complex problems of business to derive the solution. Coding is a way of communication in which developers demonstrate his or her understanding. These days, coding can involve too many languages such as C Sharp, Java, Python, C, C++, F Sharp, JavaScript, and many more. Just pick up the language, uh, the, just pick up your favorite language. Um, the next is testing. You cannot certainly ship your product without testing it. With extreme programming, you ideally want to automate as much of your testing as possible so that you can repeat the testing frequently. This is done by writing unit tests. Unit tests will test a small block of code in isolation 
uh, of any external dependencies like databases or the file system. Uh, with extreme programming, the developer will practice what is called as test-driven development. This is where you write a failing test case first and implement just enough code to pass the test and then refactor the code to a better structure while test still passed. Uh, the program will strive to cover as much of the code in unit tests as they can to give them a good level of overall code coverage. Uh, this code coverage will help build a trust that the system operates as expected. Uh, we will cover test driven development a bit more little later on. The next activity is, is listening. As I mentioned earlier, business is a part of development team and programmers must listen to what our customer need. They must understand business need to develop the best solution. The requirement for the customer are documented as a series of user stories. These user stories help to derive out a series of acceptance tests, which help determine when a user story is completed and working as expected. Once user stories and acceptance criteria are written, the developer can then start their planning and estimation. The final activity of XP is designing. Software solutions are usually complex and it sometimes required to look at the overall system design. This doesn't mean that you would create a several hundred page of design document as that could be quite wasteful. But there is a definite value in producing a overall system design where you look at the overall structure of the system and its dependencies. Ideally, you want to create a system where all the components are decoupled from each other as they can be so that so that change in one component doesn't require sweeping change across all across the rest of the systems. Right, let's move on to the next section, which is values of extreme programming. The first one is communication. Good communication is essential for any project. This is how the developers know what to do and how the uh, customer knows when it will be done. XP puts developers and customers in constant communication. A customer set business priorities and to answer any questions about how the customer must analyze a project both as a real user and from the business point of view. The customer sees the team's progress every day and can adjust the work schedule as needed. As the customer works with the development developers to produce the test to verify that a feature is present and work as expected. When you have a question about the feature, you should ask the customer directly. A five minute face to face conversation peppered with body language gestures and a whiteboard drawing communicates much more than an email exchange or a conference call can. So removing the communication barrier between customers and development increases your flexibility. Communicating clearly about the goals, status and priorities allows you to succeed. Next value is simplicity. Simplicity means building only the system that really needs to be built. It means solving only today's problem today. Complexity costs a lot and predicting the future is very hard. Armed with communication and feedback, it's much more easier to know um, exactly what you need. If you practice simplicity, it should be easy to add features when it becomes necessary as it would be to add it today. Next is feedback. Feedback means asking questions and learning from the answers. The only way to know what a customer really wants is to ask him. The only way to know if the code does exactly what it should do is to test it. The sooner you get the feedback, the more time you have to react to it. Uh, XP provides rapid, frequent, rapid and frequent feedback. Every XP practice is a part of building feedback loop. The best way to reduce the cost of change is to listen and learn from all the from all those sources as often as possible. This is why XP concentrates on frequent planning, designing, testing, and communicating. Rapid feedback reduces the investment of time and resources and ideas with little payoff. Failures are found as soon as possible, 
within days or weeks rather than months or years and this feedback helps to refine your schedule and your plans it allows to it allows you to steer your project back on track as soon as someone notices a problem and identifies when a feature is finished and when it will cost more or less than previously believed it builds confidence that the system does just what customer really wants next is courage courage means making hard decisions when necessary if feature isn't working fix it if someone code is not up to the standard improve it if you are not going to deliver everything you promised on schedule be upfront and tell the customer as soon as possible courage is a difficult virtue to apply no one wants to be wrong or break the promise the only way to recover from a mistake though is to admit it and fix it delivering software is challenging but meeting that challenge instead of avoiding it leads to a better software final is respect um respect underlies the other values previously mentioned every member of the team must care about the project intrinsic rewards like motivation enjoyment and job satisfaction uh, beat extrinsic rewards like employee of the uh, month award or physical rewards everyone gives and feel respect they deserve as a valued team member everyone should contribute value to the team even if it's simply enthusiasm uh, developers should always respect the expertise of the customer and customer should respect the expertise of developers managers should respect the developers right to accept responsibility and receive uh, authority over the work extreme programming practices um extreme programming in extreme programming there are 12 practices that are that are followed these are split into four main groups that aim to define software development best practices these are fine scale feedback continuous process shared understanding and programmers welfare so in fine scale feedback first of all we have pair programming pair programming means that all the code is produced by two people programming on one task at one workstation one programmer has control over the workstation and is thinking mostly about coding in detail the other pro- the other programmer is focused on the big picture and is continuously reviewing the code that is being produced by the first programmer programmers trade roles after short period of time the pairs are not fixed programmers switch partners frequently so that everyone knows what everyone else is doing and everybody remains familiar with the whole system even the parts outside their skill set this way pair programming can also enhance team wide communication next is planning game the main planning process within extreme programming is called planning game the game is a meeting that occurs once per iteration typically once in a week or every two weeks the planning process is divided into two parts the first part is release planning this is focused on determining what requirements are included in which ne- in which near term release and when they should be delivered the customer and developers are both part of the meeting after release planning we have iteration planning this plans the activities and tasks of the developer and this process the customer is not involved the purpose of the planning game is to guide the product into delivery instead of predicting the exact dates when the deliverables um, will be needed and produced which is difficult to do the aim is to steer the project to completion next is test driven development unit tests are automated tests uh, that that test the functionality of pieces of the system being developed within xp unit tests are written before code is written the approach is intended to stimulate the programmer to think about the conditions in which his or her code could fail xp says that a programmer is finished with a certain piece of code when he or she cannot come up uh with any further conditions which the code may fail test driven development proceed proceeds by quickly cycling through a series of steps with each step taking a minute at the most but preferably but preferably much less 
first programmers write a minimal test that should break the code uh, that should break the code because the functionality hasn't been fully implemented then programmers verify that the code doesn't indeed fail the test then a programmer will write the minimum amount of code to make the tests pass uh, then the unit tests tests are run to make sure that they pass uh, then you should modify and restructure the code to do a better design while the tests still pass. And the final, and finally we have whole team. Within XP, the customer is one who really uses the who really uses the system. XP says that the customer should be on hand at all times and available for question. For instance, a team developing a healthcare dispensing system should include pharmacy business partner to answer questions and assist with the design. Um, next, we have continuous process. In continuous process, first we have is continuous integration. The development team should always be working on the latest version of the software. Since different team members may have versions saved locally with various changes and improvements, they should try to upload their version uh, to the code repository every hour or when they achieve a significant functionality. The source code repository should ideally run an automated build against the code as it is checked in and then run the automated unit tests. This will test the integrity of the code being checked in. Continuous integration will avoid delays later on in the project cycle uh, caused by integration problem. Next we have is refactoring and design improvements. Because XP advocates programming only what is needed today, at times this may result in a system that is stuck. One of the symptoms that the system needs maintenance is that the functionality changes will require changes to multiple copies of the same or similar code. Another symptom that is another symptom is that changes in one part of the code will affect lots of other parts of the code. XP says that when this occurs, the system is telling you to refactor your code by changing the architecture, making it simpler and more generic. Next we have is small releases. The delivery of the software is done by frequent releases. This releases enrich functionality of the live system. The small releases help the customer to gain confidence in the progress of the project. This helps maintain the concept of whole team, as the customer can now come up with his suggestions on the project based on his real experience. We will now take a look at the practices of shared understandings. First we have is coding standards. Coding standards is an agreed upon set of rules that the entire development team agrees to adhere throughout the project. The standards specify a consistent style and format of source code, as well as various programming constructs and patterns that should be avoided in order to reduce the complexity and defects. The coding standards may be a set of conventions specifying by, specified by the language vendor or customer custom defined by the uh, development team. These days, it's common to use coding productivity tools like ReSharper, CodeRush, uh, Just Code, Scala Style, PMD to help enforce these standards. These tools will be set up with predefined set of rules. And as the developer is writing code, these tools will highlight any violations of the coding standard. These tools also offer suggestions for the violation these tools are excellent for ensuring consistency within a code base. Next we have is collective code ownership. Collective code ownership means that everybody is res responsible for all of the code. This in turn means that everybody is allowed to change any part of the code. Pair programming contributes to this practice by working, um, by working different pairs. All programmers get to see all part of the code. A major advantage of collective code ownership is it speeds up the development process because if an error occurs in the code, any programmer can fix it. By giving every programmer the right to change the code, there is a risk of error being introduced by programmers who think they know what they are doing but do not foresee certain dependencies. But comprehensive and well-defined unit tests 
help to address this problem. If unforeseen dependencies create errors, then when the unit tests are run, they will show up as a failure. Next we have simple design. Programmers should take simple best approach to software design. Whenever a new piece of code is written, the developer should ask themselves, is there a simpler way to introduce the same functionality? If the answer is yes, the simple course should be chosen. Refactoring should always uh, be used to make complex code simpler. Finally, with shared understanding, we have system metaphor. The system metaphor is a story that everyone, customer, programmers, and managers can tell about the uh, can tell about how system works. For example, it's a naming concept of classes and methods that should make it easier for the team members to get the functionality for a particular class or method from its name only. A system may create a dispensable uh, stock class for a dispensing system. And if the store goes out of stock, then the system will return a warning when a check stock availability method is called on the dispensing stocks class. For each operation, the functionality is obvious to the entire team. For the final principle, let's take a look at programmer welfare. The final practice that we, have, uh, we will look at is that of sustainable pace. The concept is that the programmer and software developers should not work for more than 40 hours in a week. And if there is an overtime this week, then the next week should not include any more overtime. Since the development cycles are short cycles of continuous integration and full development releases are more frequent, uh, the projects in XP do not follow the typical crunch time that the other team or other projects required. Also included in this concept is that the people perform best and most creatively if they are rested. A key enabler to achieve sustainable pace is to um, frequently, frequently merge the code and always have an executable and test covered high quality code. Well tested continuously integrated frequently deployed code and environments also minimize the frequency of unexpected production problems and outages. Um, and the associated after hours, nights, and weekend work that is required. Now that we have taken a look at different agile practices, let's take a look at the roles of extreme programming. An XP team generally consists of developers, customers, managers, and a coach. The role of developer is an important one. A developer usually estimates the stories define tasks for these stories, then estimate these tasks, start with the failing unit test cases, write code to pass the written unit tests. Developers are sup supposed to refactor the code as well if they see any code smells. Next is customer. The customer role, uh, the customer role plays a crucial role in XP team. A customer guides the team with all the requirements and business priorities. The customer is required to be in constant communication with the team. The customer is supposed to provide with the user stories, explain these stories to the team and decide on priorities. The next we have is manager. The manager is supposed to, assi is supposed to assist the team for planning game. Manager is responsible to familiarize the team and the customer on the rules of planning game schedule and conduct release planning and iteration planning meetings. Manager should ensure that the team is working towards the next release as they progress through the iterations. Finally, the coach. If the team is new to extreme programming, the role of coach is crucial. A coach consists assist the team with extreme programming practices. A coach work towards the goal of making the team self-reliant and be ready to help. So that's all about extreme programming. So um, is it all good? Well, a methodology is uh, as good as the people are involved in it. Um, there are, there are um, uh, certain people 
or there there are people who say that it is only good for senior developers uh, well um it again depends on the team that how how they how comfortable they are with the methodologies some people do complain that it's a cultural shift that i agree to some extent um people who are coming from waterfall model they may feel sometimes that there is insufficient documentation um there people sometimes the business people specifically sometimes say that there are um uh, that there are no realistic estimates so it's it's again depends on the team that how they follow this extreme programming thanks for watching i hope you have enjoyed the session please post your comments and suggestions